Okay, so this this diagram is just going to uh, reiterate what I put on the board, but it's a slightly nicer diagram, and it shows you that gamma loop, starting with activation of the gamma motor neuron, sending action potentials out to contract the polar regions of the one a, of the uh, interfusal fiber, excuse me, of the polar regions of the interfusal fiber, which in turn stretches the equatorial region, resulting in an activation of the 1A afferent. 1A afferent is activated, action potentials, blah, blah, blah. They come in, they go right past the soma, into the central nervous system, and they terminate on an alpha motor neuron. And now across, there's a synapse here, and then the alpha motor neuron is excited and sends action potentials back out to the extrafusal fiber of the homonymous and synergist muscles. And so now you have this contraction that opposes the stretch. The other thing that this drawing shows you is that all of these axons, the axons coming from the alpha and gamma motor neurons and the axons of the 1A afferents, they're all traveling together in the peripheral nerve. Okay, they come from different roots. The, ve the ventral root contains the motor neuron axons. The dorsal root contains the uh, sensory uh, um, afferents, but then they join together to form a peripheral nerve. So now we're gonna take a, a situation where we're gonna do, again, a, a form of electromyography so this is, again, uh, EMG reflex testing. And so there will be a recording electrode in a muscle. So a recording, mus a recording electrode out here, it's only going to record the activity of extrafusal fibers. The intrafusal fibers, that, that does not, doesn't make a, a large enough electrical signature to, to be recorded. And, um, and we're going to put a stimulating electrode in the nerve. Now, this stimulating electrode doesn't know who these different neurons, these different axons belong to. It's just going to stimulate the axons. And so which axons will be activated depends on their threshold for activation. And as it turns out, the threshold for activation for 1A afferents is lower than the threshold of act for activation of the uh, of the alpha motor neurons, we, that, who, which is the only one we really care about. So the alpha motor neurons, um, or, the, or the motor neurons in general. OK, so it, as you increase the, the stimulus intensity, the first thing that's going to happen is the 1A afferents are going to be excited. They're going to be directly activated by a shock of increasing value. And then you're going to get more and more of them in, uh, activated. And then you're going to cross the threshold for the motor uh, uh, neurons, and now you're going to get those motor neurons excited. You're going to still have the uh, 1A afferents excited, and then you're going to proceed from there. So you have a, a period where no one's excited, a, a, a uh, shock intensity that's above the threshold for sensory neurons, below the threshold for motor neurons, um, and that during that time only the 1A afferents will be excited. And then a, uh, a step up in intensity gives you activation of both the motor and the sensory motor neurons. So your assignment is to figure out a few things. So you're going to take that setup where you have an electrode here. It's stimulating the nerve. You are recording the activity of the extrafusal fibers. There will, be a, there will be a response when the sensory fibers are activated, and only the sensory fibers are activated, there will be a response. There's another different response when the motor fibers get activated directly. And your first question that I want you to answer is, which happens first? So at, a t at an intensity where both motor and sensory fibers are, are activated and there's there is a motor and a sensory response, which one is quicker to happen? Which one has a shorter latency? Does the motor response happen before this sensory response, or is it vice versa? OK? Um, OK, now you're going to try and you're going to remember that axons carry information. They carry action potentials in either direction. If you just plop in in the middle, they're going to carry action potentials in both directions. And so now you're going to, you're going to describe 
what's the pathway by which a, a shock of the sensory, activation of the sensory neurons produces a response, and what's the pathway by which activation of the motor uh, axons produces a response, okay? How many synapses are involved in each of those pathways? You're gonna realize that, that when an action potential is coming this way, and artificially an action potential is coming in the other way, when they meet, they will collide. Why? Because the refractory period of each will prevent this, this uh, action potential needs to come over here, but this stretch of membrane is in the refractory period from this action potential. So it can't move past it. So, and the same is true. This one can't move past this one. So what? They meet in the middle and no one wins. No one wins, silence. Nothing gets past that, that collision. If you understand that, now think about what happens as you increase the, t the intensity of the stimulation so that all the motor neurons are activated. What's gonna happen to the sensory response? Okay? In the next uh, video, we're gonna move on from the 1A reflex, the ever fascinating 1A reflex, and talk about the 1B reflex.